Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU plans to fit all cars with speed limiters Church of England hijacked for pro-EU cathedral service featuring prayers for Britain to stay in Europe EU influx leaves 3,000 children without primary school places for the new term Banks cut 5,500 branches across Europe in 2012, plus EU Emergency Centre to manage disasters full-time. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Under the proposals, new cars would be fitted with cameras that could read road speed limit signs and automatically apply the brakes when this is exceeded. Patrick McLaughlin, the Transport Secretary, is said to be opposed to the plans, which could also mean existing cars are sent to garages to be fitted with the speed limiters, preventing them from going over 70 miles an hour. The new measures have been announced by the European Commission's Mobility and Transport Department as a measure to reduce the 30,000 people who die on the roads in Europe every year. Wow, what a show of state control. Why stop at automatic braking? Let's just fit the car with artificially intelligent computers and have them drive themselves. I can see it now at lunch recesses in the Parliament. All the MEPs rush into the underground garage to grab a self-driving EU Johnny Cab. The Church of England was at the centre of an extraordinary row over claims it is being used to stop Britain leaving the European Union. Prayers for Britain to stay in the EU, forming part of a Brussels-backed event to mark the 40th anniversary of the UK joining the common market, are to be said in a service at Salisbury Cathedral. The event next month is being held in Salisbury because it was the home of the late Sir Edward Heath, the Prime Minister who took the UK into what is now the EU in 1973. Leading pro-Europeans will be attending. Given the popularity of the EU, I should think one round of cheese sandwiches and six Mr Kipling almond slices should easily cover the congregation's post-service refreshment requirements. Education bosses blame immigration for adding to the strain on already crammed classrooms as the Mail on Sunday reveals thousands of children do not have a state primary school place for the new term. A national survey found the families of more than 3,000 children who had been rejected by all their preferred schools and had refused an offer of last resort, primaries that which were often miles from their home. Predictably, the overcrowded Britain issues are now coming home to roost. We flagged this as a forthcoming issue in our report in early spring. The sad part is that oversubscription of school places is set to escalate further, as even where funding is available, the schools cannot be brought on stream fast enough. This is a shocking example of Chairman Cameron's complete failure to keep his eye on the ball. Banks cut 5,500 branches across the European Union last year, 2.5% of the total, leaving the region with 20,000 fewer outlets than it had when the financial industry was plunged into crisis in 2008. Last year's cuts come after 7,200 branches were axed in 2011, according to data analysed by Reuters from the European Central Bank Statistics. Now, the banking crisis is far from over, and when one considers the plight of Greece, I deeply suspect we are in for another round of purse-string tightening as we go into the autumn. The European Union Emergency Management Centre will now be on duty 24-7. Recent forest fires in the Balkan states show how important this central authority is. The headquarters seems unimpressive. It is just a single room, approximately 50 metres square with glass walls, surrounded by offices in one of many EU buildings in Brussels' European quarter. Electronic maps and television screens glow along the wall, while seven employees sit at their computers. That's a little more than usual, because right now the south of Europe is ablaze with forest fires. 
Well, I suspect another round of recruitment is in order, as whilst the trees burn in the forests of southern Europe, the EU flag is burning in the streets. Today in our video library, as EU and US free trade agreement discussions continue, this CNN report explains that trading already exists between the two economic heavyweights. Beneath the surface, much of what is going on is market deregulation and harmonisation. The unspoken chimera is that such regulation will lead to further dominance and control of global corporations, reducing market diversity and competition. As CNN reports, however, the key political plank is jobs, and given the depressing employment figures on both sides of the Atlantic, it's difficult to see the public being aware of the underlying issues. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>